In the meantime, we want to get into, dive into a little deeper, some of these economic proposals uh, by Vice President Harris there on the campaign stump. We're going to do that right now with Eric Sterner of uh, Apollon Global Management. He joins us. Um, Eric, thanks for being with us here. Uh, I know you've been following this all very, very closely today. The corporate price gouging plank and tenet of this platform here, it's getting a lot of attention, uh, so much so, though, that critics are saying, you know, corporate price gouging is not the reason why we're in such a high inflationary atmosphere. It's the fact that during the COVID pandemic and in the immediate months after, trillions of dollars were pumped into the economy. What's at play here? Why do Vice President Harris and President Biden uh, believe that corporate price gouging is to blame for inflation? Well, yeah, that's interesting, and, and thanks for having me. And and I, I think you know, there's a lot of people that are, are very frustrated and fed up with the higher cost of living, inflation, and, and looking for someone to blame. And, and it seems that that part of Harris's economic plan is to blame corporate America. And and I, I don't necessarily agree with that as far as the, the, the groceries and, and uh, there's many external factors that have, have applied to some of the higher costs. I mean, you look at uh, coffee has been higher and that's can be uh, contributed to just the higher cost of cocoa beans because of heavy rainfall in um, coffee producing countries. Eggs is another thing. That's one of the highest inflationary items on the food um, section. And part of that was attributed to the bird flu and, and lower supply. So I don't think it's a matter of grocery stores being, um, you know, fattening their, their profit mar mar margins. In fact, they have very thin profit margins. It's about one and a half percent. It did slightly increase during the pandemic, but it's since come down. So I don't think that that's the answer. I think it's ignoring the problem there. And even I know uh, back in the spring, um, four of the major meat producing companies went before the House Agricultural Committee to, to discuss this. And they referenced the higher transportation costs, higher labor costs that they passed on to their clients. That was leading to higher prices. And that's applied to every sector in, the, in this economy as far as higher labor costs being passed on the clients. So uh, I have in front of me a statement from the Meat Institute. It's uh, one of these main lobbying firms for uh, the meat and poultry industry. Uh, they're responding to some of these allegations uh, about price gouging uh, across a wide swath uh, of kind of the food and commodity in industry here. They say this, the Harris campaign rhetoric unfairly targets the meat and poultry industry and does not match the facts. Food prices continue to come down from the highs of the pandemic. They say prices for meat are based on supply and demand. And they also go on to say, uh, citing some of those external factors you were alluding to, uh, avian influenza, a shortage of beef cattle, and high input prices like energy and labor are all factors that determine prices at, at the meat case here. So it is more uh, of a dynamic, complex issue. Uh, aside from you know corporate price gouging and food prices here, what about labor when it comes to especially uh, immigration uh, and illegal and legal migrants who are looking for a job in the United States, whether they're here legally or illegally. Um, you've heard there on the campaign trail from former President Donald Trump, uh, who has alleged that immigrants here illegally are taking the jobs of hardworking Americans uh, of all races, white Americans, black Americans here. Uh, how does the labor market and the stock market writ large respond to immigrants getting a job when they come here. Did Vice President Harris touch on that today? And is it favorable to say that they contribute to the labor market positively? Yeah, I, I did it not, I listened to the speech, I did not hear any, any um, uh, points re regarding immigration. Yeah. And immigration over the past uh, year and well, past two years has helped us get inflation back under control. Okay. Because the three major components led to higher inflation. It was the supply chain dis disruptions, um, excessive fiscal stimulus, and also the, the short supply on, on the labor force. Uh, the great resignation through COVID, sure. many people retire, reducing the, the labor force supply. And immigration helped restore that balance. So my concern, if we do cut back on immigration and potentially even go through with some of those deportation plans that Trump has alluded to, that could reignite inflation and, and put us back where we started. So there is a concern there on my part. 
Okay, and let's talk quickly, though, about housing as well. She outlined uh, quite an extensive housing policy. She wants to build uh, millions of new housing units uh, via various uh, federal grants uh, and land grants. Uh, she also wants to uh, incentivize first-time home buyers and first-time home buyers who may be first-generation Americans here with some uh, federal dollars as well. Is that going to increase housing supply, or is that just yet another example of the government coming in to control a market like the housing market? Yeah, the, there's two major components of her plan there, and one is calling for the construction of 3 million new housing units in the next four years. That's on target. That's part of the problem we have. We know, and it's been noted by Powell and Fed uh, press conferences and many others, we have a housing supply issue, and the higher mortgage rates are keeping less supply on the market. The, the more immigration is causing more housing needs across this country. So the construction of new homes, yes, that's the long-term solution to get shelter costs back in line. The tax incentives, uh, I'm, I'm a bit more skeptical on because one, how are we going to fund that? I, I mean, what, what neither candidate is approaching right now is how they're going to address the fiscal deficit. And it seems to me without knowing how they're going to fund it, it could increase the deficit and that has to be addressed. But the other part is that it actually could increase the housing costs, these tax credits, because the reason housing and shelter is so high is because demand is high, supply is low. If you, you introduce these tax credits initially without the construction of new homes, all you're doing is increasing demand and there's no solution that's a supply side. So I think that could actually make the problem worse in the short term. Uh, Eric, just lastly, uh, President Biden in the White House noted today is the two-year anniversary of the passage of the Inflation Reduction Act. We're talking about some more of these uh, Harris economic proposals she would implement if elected president here. Are they inherently in inflationary? We brought our viewers the CPI report for July. Earlier this week, inflation fell below 3% for the first time in, in three years. Does uh, any of these policies run the risk uh, of making inflation higher? Uh, when you, I mean, the, the, the immigration uh, component, like, like I mentioned previously, is, is a concern that okay. could reignite it. And, and then the other piece that, that my concern that could reignite it is, is tariffs, because tariffs uh, have been a big part of the, of the Trump plan. And it's embraced by Democrats as well. We know Trump is a stronger advocate. So, so that could reignite the inflation problem we have there. So those are probably the two biggest concerns I have as far as uh, inflation reigniting, immigration potentially cutting back there and the increased uses of, usage of uh, tariffs. All right, uh, Eric Sturmer there uh, with uh, Apollon Wealth Management. Uh, thanks so much for your insight into all of this. Have a good weekend. We'll talk soon. Thanks for having me.